and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. Today, the show comes to you from the wonderful race course at Cheltenham. We're here in the paddock. Our sellers have already arrived in the main building. I'm going to seat them with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and tempt them with a cash offer on the table today. 500. We're nowhere near. We're nowhere near. Now, if I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to advise them to reject it and take a gamble and go to auction in the hope that you will get a little bit more money there. Everyone wants to do business. Will they take cash? Will they gamble? Either way, they want to pass the winning post. They want the real deal. Over on Alison's table, there's an opal. But will it make her mouth water? What are you going to tell me about this ring? It's a little opal diamond ring. Yes, well, it belonged to my godmother. And you just haven't worn it? No, no. Because it's in nice condition. It is, yeah. Opals, probably of all the gemstones, have been the most interesting. Um, in the Roman times, the Romans would use opals as currency. And the quality of that opal, when that was made, around about the 30s, would perhaps have been called a little bland. Most opals that you go and buy today from a modern jewellers have been irradiated or treated in some way to enhance their colour. What you are seeing is Mother Nature's handiwork at its very best. It's got all the colours you want to see in it. It's got red, blue, orange, yellow, green. It tells its story. And why are you selling it now? Just because you don't wear it? You don't... Well, I don't wear it. It's sat in the drawer doing nothing. And I think if it stayed there eventually, my family probably would sell it anyway. And I'm thinking, well, it's sat there and it's a shame because it's a very pretty ring. I love opals. I love the box. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make you two offers. I shall also be wanting to make an offer for the box. Because the box is a very desirable box if you're a jeweller, which I am. And I could sell that box with a nice period ring in very easily. It will make the ring look extra splendid. So for the box, £20. Staggered by that. <laughs> I thought I never realised for one minute the box would be worth that amount of money. Are you happy to deal for £20 on that box? Yes, quite happy, thank you. We've got a deal. <laughs> That's deal one out of the way. <laughs> now, the ring for the very pretty little ring that I like 50, 100, 150. Now, just hang on a second here because I've seen what I consider to be a super duper sales technique. First of all, you've been offered 20 pounds for that box. That's lulled you into this sense of blimey, I'm getting great money from this dealer, and then 150 pounds has gone down on the table for the ring. Let me tell you that the independent valuers value that up to 250 pounds. So don't be rushed into this. 20 pounds for the box. Good move that, Alison. <laughs> if anything, you have to decide really if you want to split the ring from the box. 200 for the ring, 20 pounds for the box. Have we got a deal? Yes, you've got a deal. Well done, darling. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Well, that deal put a bit of a sparkle into the day. Over on John's nice table, time's up for this Well, next what item. brings you here? You bought a pocket watch. Yes. Can you tell me a bit about it? What do you know about it? All I know about it, it was my mother's. Uh, she never wore it. She kept it in a drawer of her dressing table. Mm -hmm. uh, when she passed away, it came to me, and I've had it in the drawer of my dressing table ever since. And you haven't worn it either. And I haven't worn it, no. <laughs> what suddenly made you decide you want to sell it? I need the money. You need the money, and any particular reason? Well, um, I'm into 1940s reenactments. My friends and I go to various events, and we go on 1940s theme holidays. We love dressing up in the 40s attire, but... Mm. Uh, original 40s attire are very expensive. That's really interesting. Um, right. Well, let's have a look. Thank you. Um, it's a silver watch with gold raised decoration, which is very nice, and the 
and the numerals, Roman numerals, are exactly the same. They've, they're also in, the, in, in gold. Whether it's gold or not, I don't right. know. Okay. The minute hand. It's incredibly fine. They are the original ones. Oh are yes, they? they'd be they're blue blued steel. Oh right. And you can generally tell on clocks and watches whether the hands were original. The minute hand will always end on the outer edge of the oh, minute nice. ring, and the hour will always end on the same, you know, by the hours. If they either short or overlap. They're probably not original. They've just oh, right. been cobbled up off a, another watch, you know, which, yes. which people did. I'm pretty sure it is a lady's watch. It is a, a lady's. man's watch. Is just probably a little bit larger. The back opens up like that. Yes. Where you have the winding mechanism for the watch itself, the movement. Right. At the top, and below that we have another winding hole, and that would adjust the hands. Now the movement should also be visible, yes. which is. A standard Swiss movement of probably about 1880, 1900. Now, if we look at the inner back, we can see some numbers at the bottom, and that will be a stock number from the maker. And sadly, there isn't a maker's name in there. No. And then above that, we've got something that says fine silver. Now, that means it's not English. Right. If it was English, by law, all silver had to be hallmarked. Yes. Except very small items which were exempt. But, um, it's a very nice sort of watch that a lady of quality oh, would probably I see. have. <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> um, yes. Now I've got to think carefully here about the Monet. Very they carefully. Say. Very carefully. I'm going to put him down there, and I'm going to put one more note down on the table. Right. And it's going to be a ten-pound note. Right. So we've got sixty pounds on the table. How does that grab you, as they say? It sounds very nice. It sounds very nice. Yes. Just a little bit more. No. I, um, that's, that really is my final offer. Your final, final offer? My final, final offer, yes. I'll take it. Thank you very much, Christine. Thank you well very done. much. Not Thank you. All, it's nice to have met you. Nice to have met you. Christine's dreams of 1940s glamour okay, to a lady who shaped children's dreams in the you know, they they bring in things that I don't know. Dave's an auctioneer in the are looking on. We've got some Enid Blyton magazines. Yes. And I noticed they're dated 1959 and also some cards. Yes. Okay, Wendy, tell me about them. What do you know? And... Well, um, when I was uh, small, I was a great fan of Noddy and Famous Five and. Uh, the Secret Seven, All right. and uh, I used to write to Enid Blyton quite regularly, and uh, she sent me the two postcards and the magazines, and the, ha the postcards are handwritten, um, and I mean, I think it was a wonderful thing that she did sending those to me, um, handwritten Absolutely. too. Absolutely. I just did have a quick glance. I mean, it's quite a personal little note, isn't it? Yes. She's saying all sorts of nice things, you know. Thank you for your nicely written letter. So how, how old were you, may I ask, when you were writing to her? Nine. <laughs> really, it's such a... Yes. So you obviously wrote very well, and she says, you know, it's just a nice little letter talking to you in, in a very chatty and friendly way. I mean, and she signed by her, very personal. I would have thought with the cards signed by her and the three little booklets, I would have thought they were probably quite valuable. First of all, Enid Blyton, what do you know about her and how do you assess something as an unusual lot like this? Well, you, you can look at the market, you can see similar lots coming up at auction. There's a really strong band of collectors and I think they'd be fascinated to see handwritten individual cards by the author. How do we feel out what these are worth? Well, there are records of some coming up at auction and um, we use that to base our estimate on. So we're thinking at auction, 250, 350, I mean, I'd love to see them come under the hammer because I think there would be a great deal of interest. Now, the independent valuers, they've gone into that area as well. David, our dealer, is canny. He knows his stuff. I'm interested to know what he's going to put on the table. Let's see what he puts down. Can I try and buy them from you? Yes, please. I'll get some money out. Thank you. Right, 20, 40, 60... 80, 
hundred pounds. You're getting quite excited, aren't you? Oh. Oh, well, I'll keep trying then, shall I? 20, 40, 60, 80. 180 pounds for your three little books and the postcards. 180 pounds. What do you think about that? Still light, I would say, definitely. You've heard what the auctioneer Lindsay says. I feel the same way. Far too light. I need to get in there and tell our seller, no, we need more money. I don't really know the value of these things. It's a gamble. David, hi. It's an unusual item, this. We've done a little bit of research on the internet. There were quite a few of these sent out, but not that many. I think it's more unusual to have the cards. Yes. What I like about these, of course, we know for sure this is not a facsimile. This is... Enid Blyton writing back to you from a personal request yeah. that you made to her. This seems to me the type of thing that if, if it went on the internet, Enid Blyton has a worldwide fan club and it may well be that a member of that fan club would dearly want to purchase those. Thank you. So let's have a go at 200, 220, 240, Wendy, and I think that's as brave as I'm going to be. A little bit more? No, or, or I'm, more? I'm, I'm going to stick at that because I think at 240, I'm in with a chance of making a profit and I am buying something that I'm not familiar with and don't know a great deal about. So the decision is yours. What would you like to do, Wendy? We've got a deal. You're going to sell them to me? Yes. Oh, good, so I'll have a go. Let's hope I can get a profit. <laughs> Coming up, there's some big names from the world of Dalton on John's table. I mean, it's clearly a very, very high quality piece. Yeah, it's um, a collaboration piece. Find out how much it's going to make after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from the famous Cheltenham Racecourse in Gloucestershire. And they're off over on Jan's table. Would you like to tell me what you know about it? Yep, my um, father bought it for my mother about 25 years ago. Um, he sort of always liked to buy nice, nice pieces of jewellery for mum. Yes. Um, and it's been in the family ever since. Well, I think it's very pretty. It's very delicate. It's bohemian garnet set in gold. And I like the fact very much that it comes with its original box with this lovely little ormolu clasp an original velvet mm. inside mm. to hold it in place and I think that's lovely and it makes you wonder where that's travelled. I know, yeah. And I think it's about sort of 1870, 1880 so it's got quite a bit of age. It's really an evening piece that would be worn with an evening dress, something mm -hmm. like that and obviously there are lesser and lesser occasions to wear evening dresses but I think that um, it's beautifully made and um, I think that somebody would just fall in love with it, so I'm going to put down 50, 100, 150, 200. I don't know whether I'm anywhere close to what you're thinking of selling it for. Not quite, no. Not quite, no. so I'm not a million miles away. No. <laughs> okay, well, I do want to have a go at selling it, so I'll put another 50 pounds down to make it 250. Can I squeeze a little bit more? Yeah. Well, I do like it, so I'm going to stick my neck out and put another 20 down to make 270. How does that seem? 10 more pounds might be good. That? 10 more pounds might be good. Yeah. So at 270, and I put another 10 in to make it 280, and I think then we're a little close closer step I'd to what you wanted that, yes. and that's lovely yeah, Lorraine. so we have a deal we have. thank you very thank much you very indeed much. now how could we come to the hallowed turf of Cheltenham Racecourse without it's getting them to show us their most the gentleman sat with me is Edward Gillespie now he is the managing director of Cheltenham Racecourse Thank you for bringing all these amazing things along. Let me draw your attention to this saddle here because that is the saddle of a Gold Cup winner, tell me. Dawn Run, she was a mayor in 1984, she won the champion hurdle. 1986, 
she won the Gold Cup, and that is the very saddle that was used by John Joe O'Neill, the jockey, to win on her the Gold Cup in 1986. And it was a very special moment, a very special piece for us. Coming back now to this piece here, what have we got here? This is the uh, top that uh, Pat Taff wore on Arkle in all three Gold Cups that they won together in the 1960s. 1964, 65, 66, um, he won the Gold Cup in an era when jump racing suddenly hit the, the public's awareness. Uh, and that, that's the very, the, the very top that Pat Taff wore. Now we come to something, perhaps one of the greatest jockeys of all time, the great Fred Archer. Uh, born in 1857 uh, and died, of course, very tragically young, 1886. We have some items relating to him. Now, tell me about Fred Archer. Fred Archer was born here in Cheltenham, lived in the village opposite the race course. Uh, he was champion jockey, would you believe, 13 times. Um, he rode 21 classics, over 2,700 winners. Fred was the first sporting hero of any description in Britain. A whole industry grew up around him, producing little, little, little jugs and that. Um, so he was the first person who took sport into a, a far wider population. He's very special racing, to us. Yes. Mm. Very okay. special to us. Now, the silverware here is associated mm. with Fred Archer, so mm. tell me about them mm. and what they represent. Well, this here is a little cup that he won at 12 years old in a pony race at Beckford here, within five miles of here. It's been around in his bag a bit. So you? you're never too young to start, and this young chap, um, 12 years young old. Fred, was showing great promise at 12 years of yeah, age. Yeah, that's special. Okay. This fella here was associated with the Derby in 1875. Uh, it was won actually by his father-in-law, John Dawson. Uh, it's a fine, it's a fine, I think, a Renaissance revival yes. item. Yeah. Um, and that would be typical of the trophies that were given to the trainers in those times. And this little number here was presented to him um, as a gift by Sir Henry Hawkins, uh, one of his uh, owners, as a present, no doubt, uh, to congratulate him for, for the efforts he'd made. Now, there's an item here, a presentation whip. I mean, it's just too elegant, too smart, too stunning to be used. Now, this is Fred Archer's. Yeah, that, that, that was... Yeah, yeah. Now, what's the presentation what? for here? Well, again, in those days, uh, very special gifts were, were in the form of a whip, and we have three of those in our, in our custody, and this was, we believe, presented to him by the Prince of Wales. Amazing. Um, he rode several winners for him, and this is, as you say, an item which he would have kept in this very case. He would have never used it. This would be in his trophy cabinet, wherever he had. And as you say, it's, it's an item that we hope that will be enjoyed in our Hall of Fame for many years okay. to come. Now, all these items, they're all in the Hall of Fame here mm -hmm. at Cheltenham Racecourse. Right, yeah. And anybody can come down here and can come to the Hall of Fame and see lots of amazing exhibits like these. There are other things there as oh, well. There's a lot of there's a, there's lot, a of lot of things there, so well worth a visit. If you want to be a winner, get past the winning post and get down to Cheltenham race course. On the other side of the den, a special piece of pottery is causing a stir. You've brought along what looks to me, knowing little about it, a really lovely Dalton vase. Uh, what can you tell me about it? How did you get it? And uh, you're a collector? Yeah, it was a purchase, yeah. I, it was a purchase on the uh, internet auction sites. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I do collect sort of um, ceramics, Dalton, Moorcroft, etc. Right, yeah, yes. So. And, um, I mean, it's clearly a very, very high quality piece. Obviously, this other work, the pearls, are very, very high quality. And it's quite clearly, you know, an yeah, extremely a, good piece. Yeah, it's um, a collaboration piece, um, Hannah Barlow and Eliza Simmons. Um, well, I'm sure, being of this quality, it'll be marked. And they're usually marked underneath. And here we have HB. There's also in. in marked in there ex as well so i always thought it was an exhibition, exhibition piece, piece an exhibition yeah. piece yeah it could be an exhibition there was an exhibition i think in there's a great exhibition 90 yeah. something what was a great that? exhibition and then also maybe for the victorian um diamond jubilee as yes. well but i think probably it's a bit a bit too early for the queen victoria yes diamond i was jubilee, going to say yeah. but it's got this lovely scene with um cows and yeah it's it's a it's, you know, it's something. It's a stunning, stunning thing. Bit. It looks um, gorgeous in a cabinet. And you're selling it because uh, getting married in September. 
uh, ah. some additional funds are required. So really. you, yes, wedding, yeah. wedding, wedding bells yeah. are expensive, yeah. aren't they? It's not my speciality. It's clearly a very fine thing. So being somebody who admires quality, uh, I'm going to put down some money. Yeah. And let's see where we go. Okay. Let's so put down 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, 500. We're nowhere near, John. We're nowhere near. Nowhere near, no. Right. Let's continue. See if we can get closer. 550, 600, 650, 700. Are we approaching? Are we sort of approaching landing or not? No, not even first gear. Oh, not even first <laughs> gear. 700. Well, 750, 800, 850, 900, 1,000 pounds. Gary, I think that's about where I want to be. It's not my speciality. I totally admire the quality. I think it's brilliant. And I'm too old-fashioned, I think. Had I been <laughs> collecting this stuff, been popular when I started, I think I'd have loved it. OK. Well, you've heard what John says. I know that this is not really his cup of tea. I think he's putting what I would call a sporting bid down. He's put £1,000 down. It's a fairly safe offer, but he really, it is not his type of merchandise. You need to present this with the auctioneer, let them do their homework, let them get it out there to the public, to the collectors, to the dealers, and you need to try them and get them down to their sale room. Hannah Barlow, exhibition quality, as good as it gets. It is a belter, it's a cracker, it really is. So I'm gonna say, see you at the auction. Gary, the very, very best, and I wish you all Thank the you best for your me. wedding, and I'm sure this will make a good contribution. It's a, it's a lovely object. Turning down a grand is a huge gamble. Let's hope Gary doesn't end up in a dog hat for his big dog. So you got it on the internet auction site. How long ago was that? Uh, about a year ago. OK. What did you pay for it? Seven ninety. I think that was all right. £790 for a vase of this substantial size by Hannah Barlow and Eliza Simmons. I think that was all right. Now, John Parker, one of our dealers, sat down and offered you £1,000, mate, which shows you a nice, tasty little profit, and you turned him down. Yeah. Why did you do that? I think it's worth just a little bit more, David. You've got a reserve here of £1,300 on it, with an estimate of thirteen to £1,800. It's a good lot. The question is, are the buyers here? We're about to find out. It's coming up now. Very large vase. £1,000 to start. I have 900 here at 900 Who's going on at 900 Are we all done at 900 At 900 are we all done at 900 That's not enough, I'm afraid. OK. The news is not good. You've still got the vase. Bit disappointed on the day? No, not really, no. OK. No. I just mean you've got to work harder, that's all, okay. David. Bit of overtime. Yeah. On the day, the real deal was with our dealer, John Parker. And by the way, congratulations for the forthcoming wedding. It didn't quite make the mark, but there's no denying that the Dalton is a cracker. Coming up, is there a game of Sudoku going on over on Alison's table? Three's in there. Is it? So is seven, so is nine, so is four. Find out how the numbers add up. Good. After the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. So, Chris, you have the tiles. David and his next yes, well, guest are open. Open. <laughs> Three tiles. Yep. Um, Probably from a set of 12, I would think, because they're all monthly, aren't they, seasonal? Yes. Um, we've got April, May and June here, so there must have been 12 of them. Yes. And they're almost certainly minted, I would think. That's nice But to we know. can't get them out of the 
yeah. little frames you put them in. Did you yeah. do this? Yes, we done them um, to protect the edges as much as anything. Yes. Okay. They actually came from um, an estate called Sherbourne Lodge at uh, Sherbourne House, which is like in the Cotswolds. When they were refurbishing it into luxury apartments, my husband was one of the builders out like there. Oh, I see. And these were actually found in an old fire door out on the skip, ready to be thrown out. And it was only the three of them which were actually found. Have you ever shown them to anybody with a view um, to finding out about them? We've tried, I've tried on the internet and I could never find anything out because there are actually no markings whatsoever on the back of them. Yeah, I, I, they may not be, there may be a, a small little factory mark yeah. um, on the back which yeah. would enable me to know who made it. It, it. They're almost certainly Minton. I've seen similar tiles made by Minton. They date 1880, 1890, that sort of date. Yeah. I, I, I think you could almost guarantee they're Minton. Mm. Shall I try and buy them from you? Yes, please. You're going to tell me how much you want? No, you Nobody tell me will. how much they want. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why people don't tell me what no. they want for them, but there we are. Um, what about sort of £40 for the three? No. No? No. Thank you. What about £50 for the three? No, is that your final offer? I think £50 is as much as I'd want to pay for them. Not just a little bit more? Because I, I don't think, I mean, I, I, I don't want to be mean, but I don't think I'd want personally to pay any more than that for them. Right. Maybe at auction they'll go better, I don't know. Okay. It's a gamble. Here's David, he'll help. Uh, a tricky one to value, Chris, yes. but let me tell you what the independent valuers and the auctioneer say. Mm -hmm. They say £40 to £60. Pounds. Yep. They don't seem expensive at 50 quid, which is 17 pounds a piece or 16 pound yeah. whatever a piece. They're probably worth a little bit more, but the question is, are you going to get it in auction? Exactly. I'm going to say cash is king at the moment. Yes. 50 quid is 50 quid. Yeah. Take yours and let David have the headache yes. of worrying about are they worth more? Yeah, and getting them out of the train. I think I'll take your money, David. All right, Thank Chris, we much. have a deal. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. So why have you decided to sell it? Uh, I buy and sell a few things uh, as a hobby. Really. Yes. I mean, I'd love to be doing what you're doing full time. But, yes. You no, know, I'm a builder by trade. Have you had any real good finds recently, or? Uh, a couple. I mean, a few years back, I was at a car boot and found a couple of really old spo dishes. Uh, Bought them for 25 quid for the pair. Yes. I think they were dated about 1820. Uh, put them on the internet. Yes. So, and uh, ended up with 540 quid. Oh my goodness, that's yeah. a very good so profit. It was, yeah. I really like antiques. And, yes. Uh, I saw this and thought, you know, it was worth buying at the right You'll price. You'll have a go, yes. Yeah. And what can you tell me about it? Uh, it's a little Moorcroft bars, from what I understand. Yes. Uh, I think it's a slightly later one, not one of the early ones, but uh, that's about it, really. It is a Moorcroft vase. It's not a pattern that I recognise. I can't even really pinpoint what the flowers are, but it is yeah. very pretty. Um, and underneath we have a nice clear blue mark, denoting that it was round about 1950s. And um, being perfect, I'm going to make you an offer and hope that we get a little bit near to what you want. All right. I'm going to put 20, 40 pounds down. But I think that's definitely a bit low. You feel it's a little bit low? Very bit. So a little bit more to tempt you? Yep. So if we say 50? No, I think there's still nowhere near yet. No. You want quite a bit more than that? Yeah. yeah. So I'm not, I'm even, not even warm? No, not as yet. OK. Well, let's take the 10 away and let's put another 20 down, making it 60. You're heading in the right direction. Up? Right. Mm. So how about if I put my original 10 back and say we call it 70 pounds? I'm not sure I'd want to go a lot more than that. I just think it's worth more. It's a, it's a lovely pattern, I think. It's a lovely colouring. OK, I'm going to make this my final offer. And I'm going to say I'll put down 80 pounds you wouldn't want to put that tenor back in? I don't think so, really. I think that's going to be my profit. How's that? I'll tell you what I'll do. 
Just to be fair, because I am fair, I'll put in a fiver. And we'll call it 85 pounds. And you've got yourself a deal. Yes, that's fine. Yeah. That's lovely, Nick. Right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank, Thank you. you. And now I suspect you can tell me exactly what you picked it up for. Do you remember? Yeah, I do, actually. I paid 40, so I'll do all my money oh, in a bit more. Oh, right. So Excellent. <laughs> It's a pretty box with a very pretty watch. And on the lid, it's got a date, July the 5th, 1939. It means nothing to anybody. We can work it out. OK, so how come a nice guy like you is sitting with the lady's watch? It was my mum's. My grandparents bought it for my mother. Um, obviously, after they passed away, it's been handed down through the family. And my brother owns this watch, which he wants to sell. And did your mother wear it a lot? No. Just for high days and holidays? Christmas and birthdays. Well, it is lovely. White gold. Yeah, 18 karat white gold. 18 karat white gold. Beautiful mesh bracelet set with lovely little single cut diamonds. Very nice, and I would think that the box is original to it. I believe so. Out. You have a willing buyer. Good. Well, let's see what we can do here. So you're selling it on behalf of your brother. Yeah. 100. 200. 300. And? I know it won't be far from the figure you had in mind. Three's in there. Is it? It is, yeah. Good. So is seven, so is nine, so is four. Well, then that means four figures, <laughs> doesn't it? You are a crafty critter, you are, aren't you? Um, I mean, I think really, you know, I'd be quite happy to know your price. Do you want mm. to share it? No. Right, this is my last offer. 350. Unfortunately, you're a little bit shy of the mark. Am I? You're not prepared to go anymore. Well, you're sounding like it's a lot more, and I don't feel a lot more in it for me. Well, so if that's if the case, you'd like auction. I'll let you know when the auction is, and you can bid on it. Okay, so it's to auction. Yes, please. All right then. Thanks anyway. My pleasure. Coming up, David has a challenge on his hands. Jack, do you have a smile? But will he put down enough cash to make Jack happy? She's given you the sensation she's told you how much it It's the last hurdle of Dickinson's real deal, coming to you from Cheltenham Racecourse. Before the break, we saw Alison do her best to buy this golden diamond lady's watch. You have a willing buyer. But Neil wasn't won over and it's up to auction. We join him in the Duke there now as it's about to go under the hammer. You sat down with Alison Chapman. Um, she said, I will give you £350. In cash? Cash. No Ooh, deductions. Pound notes? Pound notes. What are you thinking? <laughs> you turned it down. I did. I did. Why did you turn that down? You obviously thought I it's thought it was worth a bit more. Well, I think I agree in some ways. This is a nice example. Four to five hundred pounds is the estimation. The reserve is four hundred quid. Mm. How lucky do you feel? Hopeful, let's put it like that. Not so much well, lucky, hopeful. I think it's worth the money, but I'm going to say this. They are difficult to place. They're worth it, but not everyone wants to buy one. Fingers crossed. Let's see what happens. It's coming up now. 280 here at 280. Who's going on? 290. 300. 320, 350, 380, at 380, right in the deep at 380, 400 here, 420, in the deep now at 420. They've passed the reserve. At 420, but it's right in the deep at 420, 450 anywhere. At 420, then I'm selling. Thank you. 420 pounds. I make that 357 pounds after the deduction of commission. Yeah. Satisfied? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it comes, it comes out. 
on the day, I think it was not a bad deal. It was a good look, huh? But they're not the easiest things to sell. 420 under the gavel, take home 357. Real deal, tick tock. We head back to the dealer's den where David got a bit of a generation. Hey Jack, what have you got him with? Is this your inheritance you're selling? Um, no, it's actually my mum's, and she got it from her auntie, which passed away, and it obviously was given to my mum. Oh, I see. So you're her agent? I'm selling on behalf. You're selling on behalf of your... And she's given you dispensation. She's told you how much you can take and yep. what it's worth. It doesn't look very exciting, does it? It looks like sort of bullion, almost, you know, for scrapping. Um, uh, when I first looked at this, I thought it had a metal core, but in fact, we have had a good look, and it, it is actually all gold. That is nine carat gold, and you've got some little sapphire earrings here, some little clips, a watch after a fashion, some chains, and the little wedding band is 22 carat. Do you agree with all that? Yep. I mean, what we have here, really, is the, is the kind of gold that is being scrapped. So I'm, I'm looking at it, if I was able to buy it, really, at scrap value. Jack, do you ever smile? Can do. Go on, give us a smile. I'm getting my money out. That should make you smile. Or are you just very serious about life? Let's see how much money you put down. Ah. Uh, OK. 50 quid? 100 quid? 150 pounds? Nope. Do you get this money? Nope. Do you get a proportion of it? Maybe. I think I think you should get a little commission for coming in and selling it, don't you? Two hundred pounds, Jack. No. Not enough. No. Nope. Not enough. I will give you two hundred and fifty pounds for your bits and bobs. A little smile. No. I still think that's not enough. Here's David. Let's okay. Get some input. You may well be right. Two fifty to three hundred pounds is the approximation of what of what the independent value and the auctioneer is saying. But the assessment in the gold of a scrap value is three hundred and fifty pounds worth of gold. David knows this, so he's playing a pretty tough game with us. At the moment, he can scrap this for three fifty, and he's giving you two fifty. So he's got a hundred pounds. You've got to say to him. David, can I squeeze your profit just a little bit? Will you give a little bit this way? And then he has enough to make a working good profit. Try and come to a compromise here. It's better than going to auction. Right, well, that was all helpful. Yes? Yep. And you nearly smiled then, Jack. You did. I'll give you 270. I, I, I don't want to pay any more. Couldn't I even squeeze you another ten Not a fiver. Not a pound, Jack. 270. 270 seems reasonable. And I'm willing to take that. All right, Jack, let's shake hands. We have a deal. Thank you. Terrific. Well done. And Jack didn't I'm glad the smile. money's going even for after something done the as deal, pleasant as that. Good, good, good for customer. you. With all the buying and selling done and dusted, all we need to Tell find out now is how our deal is with my, today's um, bank. Jack shake hands. We have a deal. Yep. Businessman, yep. Terrific. Well done. He left well David done. a measly ten percent profit when he scrapped the gold for three hundred pounds. David also made a profit on the tiles, which he sold for seventy. Nice to meet you. Silver fob watch for seventy pounds. Alice sold that old for two hundred and twenty pounds. Will it be a clean sweep for the dealers? Do it, I'll pay 40. Jan sold the Moorcroft for £100. It profit all round. We've had a great day here in Cheltenham. There's been lots of buying and selling, just the way we like it. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time. For Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.